Bridge of Incidents. It was Neville Goddard who coined this term, Bridge of Incidents, and what it refers to is the series or sequence of events that happen in between the imaginal act or writing down and imagining what you desire to create and the manifestation or the materialization of it. People, environment, circumstance, information presents itself in the screen of space, and this is what we call the bridge of incidents. The bridge of incidents are there to materialize your dreams. They occur in sequence according to the laws of the universe to bring forth what you desire. This is how we use the power within. All power is within, but perhaps at times we might find ourselves giving the power away to the external world, the outer world, and become reactive and add unnecessary disempowering meaning to any element that shows up via the external world or specifically the bridge of incidents. So to kick off this discussion, I've created an affirmation, which we're going to use as a mind stimulus as we get into the discussion, as well as this affirmation can be used to help you understand the importance of the bridge of incidents. And remember that all the power is within you and not find yourself reactive to the various things that might happen in the external world to dishearten you, to cause you to lose focus, to cause you to become at a place where you lose hope, to cause you to drift into an alternative direction that may not serve you. All of these things can be addressed by using this affirmation. I know more so each day that all the power is found in my inner world. I know more and more so each day that the outer world is a reflection of my inner world and I seek to understand how so each day. On the journey to progressively realize the desire within my imagination, I value the bridge of incidents and give them gratitude because they reflect the causes via my inner world. During my journey, I transcend all meaning within that assumes that the power is in the outer world for any element that shows up during the bridge of incidents. I am one with the power of God in my imagination, and I command all forces to bring forth my vision through divine guidance within, including automatic thoughts, emotions, and actions that are harmonious to my desired outcome. As I bring forth my desire, I learn this creative process, and it embeds itself into my subconscious mind for further use at a later point so I may use the power given to me by my Father to create as the power was used to create me. I understand that we are told that we are children and we are to be imitators of God, the infinite intelligence within. I strive to understand how He became one with us in order so that I may imitate Him. I know that God lives as one with a mind that is possessed by a dream and I am that mind. The journey and I are one. The realization of my vision and I are one. And I am one with infinite intelligence, therefore the bridge of incidents that reveal themselves on the journey to the desired state are also one with the four realms of existence, which include spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. I maintain the feeling of the wish fulfilled subconsciously through real power within and all thoughts, emotions, and actions align more so each day to materialize as the bridge of incidents leading me to the materialization of my vision. So Neville says, If you tell them that it came to pass because you simply imagine it, no, they will point to the series of events that lead up to it, and they will give credit to the bridge of incidents, across which you walked towards the fulfillment of that state, and they will point to some physical thing that was the cause. No, the cause is invisible, for the cause is God, and God is invisible to the mortal eye. When we impress the subconscious mind with our imagination to feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled, to imagine that we can create what we desire, the subconscious mind automatically creates certain circumstances attracts us to certain people, environment, information, produces certain kinds of behaviors that move us in the direction of our realization, the definite chief aim. Now, when somebody looks upon this from the external world and observes what you're doing, 
Or when we look at somebody else's success in the external world and observe what they're doing, we might try to mimic exactly what it is that they're doing, or others might try to mimic us. But the truth is this, it was the mind that created it, and there was an infinite potential ways that it could have been brought forth, and that was just one of the ways that it was brought forth. So thus, we have to remember then, if we're giving too much weight to the bridge of incidents, and not that the bridge, bridge of incidents can't inspire us, definitely, we could be inspired by the bridge of incidents of others, but if we give the power to the bridge of incidents, then we're releasing the power from the world within. We're releasing the power that helps us bring forth our desire in the most harmonious way related to the variables and elements that are most in alignment with our being. Now, in other videos, I've been talking a lot about identity and that the identity is something that is created based on past experiences or what is impressed in our imagination. And this is our self-image. Now, this identity or self-image expresses itself, projects itself out on the external world and reveals itself as people, environment, circumstance, and information to create in reality what is within. So this inner world or this self-image or this identity can be changed. We can change it by impressing the subconscious mind. But if we believe that the external world has power over us, then we will go into the external world and try to change it, and that will result in symptoms. And it may not result in lasting change, but what will work to a higher degree is by looking at what is reflected in the external world and realize that it came from the self-image within and go and change the self-image within. Now, this identity becomes one with the vision through the imagination, through affirmations, through faith and understanding and conviction and beliefs that say, I will bring it forth. It will happen. It will materialize in the external world. That's when the vision, which can also be looked at as God, can be one with the identity, and then it will materialize accordingly in the best way that is right for the individual, leveraging automatically through behaviors, thoughts, and emotions what is in the external world including influencing the subconscious mind of other individuals who are in harmony to help you bring it forth. See, we're all individual expressions of the same mind. We're all connected via the subconscious mind. And when we get access to this power, it means we are ready for this power. In other words, you have to be ready for this. Now, how do you become ready for this? By practicing this. If you do it again and again and again, one of the things that will happen it is, you, is you will release yourself from limiting beliefs. And these limiting beliefs cause harm to yourself, others, and divine and evolution. And through this process, you will release the limiting beliefs. And what will happen is you'll notice that the bridge of incidents that show up are harmonious, or you will recognize that they always were harmonious. And by harmonious, I'm talking about do you really value what you see in the external world as contributing factors to bringing forth your definition chief aim, or do you see them as obstacles? The cool thing about obstacles is we can transcend the meaning of obstacles. Many of us, when we go down the pathway of creating success, we encounter many obstacles. If we persist in our assumption that we will have what we desire, then these obstacles actually become opportunities. And we start to then transcend the meaning of these different kinds of obstacles. And if they show up again and again and again, as we create more and more different definite chief aims of what we desire, we're able to easily automatically value the obstacle as a stepping stone or the obstacle being part of the bridge of incidents to contribute to create what we want. But one thing we always have to remember is that the bridge of incidents only hold value to the beholder of the bridge of incidents. And value is what they believe value is. But what we want to do is remember that the bridge of incidents is one way of bringing it forth if you observe it in another person. There are infinite ways of creating what you desire. And there are ways that are so unique for you that if you believe that you will create it in that way, it will be done unto you. Now, this is something that I had learned from Think and Grow Rich. He said, 
If you believe that money is a net result of hard work alone, perish the thought. Now, prior to coming across this understanding, I thought it was. My whole life, I was working very hard, long hours, pushing myself physically and emotionally and mentally to create success. And it worked because as I believe, so it shall be done unto me. Then I said, what if I adopt this ideology from Napoleon Hill? Well, then what happened in the bridge of incidents is I started to create opportunities, attract opportunities. The bridge of incidents materialized money in ways that were harmonious to what I desired really by removing the limiting beliefs of creating money, by doing things that I enjoy, by being of service and loving the service that I provide and becoming really passionate about the aspects of quality of service, quantity of service, and spirit of service. And then I internalize the belief that money is a net result of creating products and services that are needed and useful, that are a result of quality of service, quantity of service, and spirit of service. And as I believe it was done unto me, and I was happy on how the bridge of incidents shows up. Now, there's many ways of creating money. As you believe, so it shall be done unto you. And so what we have to remember is that Every way a person creates success is unique and individual to what's in their subconscious mind. All the results that a person has is a net result of conscious and subconscious mind beliefs, most of it subconscious. And we could look at somebody else's results and assume that that's the way to do it, or we can create it in the way we want to create it via the inner world. So the cause then becomes the cause within. Who knows that you are imagining? No one knows, but you can sit down and imagine, and no one can stop you from doing it. But can you give reality to the imagined state? If you do, yes, a bridge of incidents will appear in your world, and you'll walk across some series of events leading to the fulfillment of the imaginal state. But don't give causation to any physical step that took you towards the fulfillment of it. So we give credit to the process and the process becomes a way to bring it forth. It is impressed on the subconscious mind, and if your subconscious mind needs to use the same process again, so it will. But if we give credit to the external world and say it was because of the process, we then begin to identify with the process, and we begin to release the truth that it was infinite intelligence within that brought us forth. Now, the truth is this. In certain states of success, you will discover a handful of processes. For me, I know this is true for entrepreneurial success. And they're tried, tested, and true processes that I have uncovered under my own bridge of incidents. And so I can assume that all success will be created through those bridge of incidents and it will happen. That's fine. But I also leave myself open to the potentiality that it can happen in a way outside of the current scope of processes that I have identified. Because if I leave myself attached to those processes, then if I look to create something that requires a process outside of that process, then I'm going to experience force, and I might manifest that by subconscious physical or emotional force to try to get my way by manipulating the situation. And that's not what I want. So then we can value what is the causation in the physical step but we don't want to become attached to it. And this is why letting go is so important. Always remember then what we're letting go is the grip on the external world. The external world is a reflection of mind. The causes within all change and all assumption has happened and always will happen within and it will be reflected and materialized in the external world. So let's talk about mind to motion. The motion in mind would compel a physical motion to correspond to it, and you will awake to find the whole thing or the whole world has changed. The whole structure of your world has changed. Your plans have changed, and it will compel that physical journey. Now, when I imagined in 2009 that when I left corporate, I was going to create success in business, I had no idea of the various steps that I would have to take on my bridge of incidents. But what I did know was I saw synchronicities, signs, inspiration from within that I honored and I applied, and a lot of it was automatic. Most of it, I would say, was automatic. And by taking those actions, by trusting myself, listening to my inner voice, and following my intuition within, 
it materialized in a certain level of success in my IT business. And then when I transitioned out of my IT business and built my consulting business and started to grow, I used the same process, but here's the thing. It became automatic. Because in my subconscious mind, I created success so many times, so I started to understand this process even better. And I started to understand it even more at a subconscious level. So then I noticed that I would trust myself more and more so without letting the noise of other people's opinions, and it may be right for them, cloud my inner voice of action that I knew I had to take, even if it was polarizing to the actions that they take. So thus, we have to remember, then our mind will become so altered, our subconscious mind will become so altered by the imaginal act, what we desire to create, that it will compel certain kinds of thoughts, emotions, and actions automatically towards creating the desire that we want. Now, if we experience resistance within, I get excited about this because the resistance within has to do with limiting beliefs. If we can identify what these limiting beliefs are and overcome these limiting beliefs within, then we will release the resistance and we will embrace the bridge of incidents that show up knowing with absolute certainty that they are contributing factors to the definite chief aim. And you might not know how to identify this conceptually, but you will feel it. Feeling is one of the most important elements of creating success. You might not be able to think it or conceptualize it, but you sure will be able to tune in and feel it. Reflecting upon my own experiences in life, this was always there. And he says, you will walk across a bridge of incidents, some series of events that you do not consciously plan. You will be compelled to make the journey. I speak from experience. So we can start with a rough plan, or we could start with no plan. The choice is up to us. But the bottom line is this. When we impress on our subconscious mind the desired outcome, the subconscious mind will express. That's the role of the subconscious mind. It will express automatically. And as a result of this expression, you will feel compelled within to might even deviate from the plan that you made or to stick with the plan. All of this will happen within. The subconscious mind speaks in synchronicity and feelings within. Sometimes it speaks with words. I know I can have conversations with my subconscious mind, and I do this regularly. As a result of being on this journey for so long, I could translate the feelings, the imagery, and the synchronicities into long conversations that I can then understand why, what, how, even more. Assumptions create facts. An assumption builds a bridge of incidents that lead inevitability to the fulfillment of itself. So we have assumptions. And a lot of our assumptions may be a net result of other people's assumptions. So it's then important to guard and protect your subconscious mind, to realize that you can create what you desire, and to encourage yourself with information that is uplifting and harmonious and related to what you desire. People, environment, circumstance, information, environment, to the best of your ability. Now, if there's contrarian people, environment, circumstance, information, and external world-based elements, you might find yourself compelled to step away from it or excuse yourself from it because it is fighting against some of the programming within. See, that information is also impressing the subconscious mind, but because you set your definite chief aim in subconscious mind, your subconscious mind will reveal to you what, through sensation, through feeling, through vi vivid imagery, through synchronicity, through conversation within, what is harmonious and what is not. And the bottom line is this, it's the assumptions. So we have within us many assumptions. We learn, as I said, assumptions through others, and we create our own assumptions in our imagination. Now, these assumptions materialize in the external world. They lead to the fulfillment of those assumptions all the time, all the time. This happens 24 hours a day. And it's the bridge of incidents that occur that lead to the manifestation of it. Now, a great exercise to do is to track the effect that happens in the world to the cause within. Once you start to understand the cause and effect relationship, then you'll be better equipped and you'll have more confidence in yourself. You don't need to do this because the truth is you don't need to be conceptual about this. You could just apply the imaginal act, 
release everything else, as Neville calls it, drop it, and it will materialize. It will, it will manifest. Now, the thing about this is that I choose to study this. I enjoy analyzing the process because I'm in a position right now where I coach, I consult, and I teach this. So when a student shows up and they have certain kinds of blockages, I'm able to track the cause and effect for them and help them realize it. But you don't need to do it. Man believes the future to be a natural development of the past. But the law of assumption clearly shows that this is not the case. Your assumption places you psychologically where you are not physically. Then your senses pull you back to where you are psychologically to where you are physically. So what happens is the assumption alters the subconscious mind. The mind becomes altered and the sensations cause you to behave a certain way. The eyes move in a certain direction. The body moves in a certain direction. Your tastes, your feelings, your being moves in a different direction, all part of the senses. And what is expressed through those senses and what is experienced through those senses is what we call the bridge of incidence. But it starts with the psychological state. Now, if we are orienting ourselves from our past, in other words, we have not impressed our subconscious mind with what we desire to create, or we're allowing past programming in our subconscious mind by not cleansing our subconscious mind from limiting beliefs to override that, then that will materialize as well as part of the bridge of incidents. So this is one of the important things to remember, and I'll reflect upon this from my experience. I'm able to create my end result a lot faster, easier, and joyous, more so than ever before, as a result of bringing forth many definite chief aims and in the process releasing limiting beliefs. These limiting beliefs create unnecessary elements in the external world which are part of the bridge of incidents, but also reveal to you of yourself and create more excess weight in the external world. So thus, I always say it's important to have a goal and use the process and create so you can also identify the limiting beliefs and then release them. Because then when you choose to create again and again and again, you'll no longer have those limiting beliefs that materialize, those assumptions that materialize as part of combination with the bridge of incidents. For example, if someone's looking to create entrepreneurial success and they have cleansed their mind of many limiting beliefs, then they'll be able to create a lot faster than somebody who has a lot of limiting beliefs in their mind. Now, the person that is impressed their subconscious mind with the entrepreneurial success but has a lot of limiting beliefs will still be on the process towards creating that definite chief aim. They'll be able to bring it forth because they've impressed it on the subconscious mind. But what will be revealed on the journey is people, environment, circumstance, and information that reveals the limiting beliefs in contrast to the definite chief aim or the desired outcome. And then by reflecting upon the cause within, we can change the cause within via affirmations or pruning shears of revision or marginal act to prevent the manifestation of those specific elements that are lodged in the subconscious mind. And thus, they will cleanse their subconscious mind. So I always say this, I enjoy the destination and the journey. I see them as one. Why do I enjoy both? Well, on the destination, the progressive realization towards my worthy ideal, I find elements within myself that are limiting beliefs that I can release, which pave the way for future successes. And the destination is very rewarding because we want to create what we desire. It's very joyous and it's a very happy moment to bring forth what we desire, to see it materialized in reality, whether it's success or an outcome that we desire. But if you enjoy both, then you will also value the bridge of incidents. And you will also see the bridge of incidents as contributing factors to the next thing you want to bring forth. It is these psychological forward motions that produce your physical forward motions in time. So psychological forward motions in your mind, imagining yourself to be a certain way, that identity change within changes the physical actions, changes the physical emotions, and directs your thoughts and your being into the direction of the ideal. And as I said, more you remove disempowering, limiting beliefs and ideas that the power is in the external world and bring it back to the cause within the more you're going to be harmonious and pre precision, faster, easier, create the outcome that you desire. And I've seen this because now I flow to the end result. 
the way I used to do this before was a lot of mental and emotional force, force myself to do things. But the way I do it now is I flow myself to do things. I enjoy the journey and I see the bridge of incidents and I see the synchronicities and I'm able to navigate them a lot easier. And if I encounter any frictions, then I understand that it is subconscious mind programming within from my past that is manifesting, materializing those elements in the external world and I can release them. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that ye may be also. And now I have told you before it came to pass that when it comes to pass, ye might believe. See, the I in this quotation is your imagination, which goes into the future into one of the many mansions. That's what the mansions refer to, what you desire to create. And this is not just about bringing forth what you desire. It's also about who you become in the journey. You've probably heard this many times. Both are important. So then, mansions are the desired state. Telling of an event before it occurs physically is simply feeling yourself into the state desired until it has the tone of reality. You go and prepare a place for yourself by imagining yourself into the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Then you speed from the state of the wish fulfilled where you have not been physically back to where you were physically a moment ago then with an irresistible forward momentum you move forward across a series of events to the physical realization or the materialization of your wish that where you have been in your imagination there you will be in the flesh also so we imagine it it impresses it on the subconscious mind, and then a bridge of incidences occur towards the materialization of that definite chief aim. And what shows up on the journey, if it seems forceful, is really just a meaning that we have within. If it puts us into a state of disempowerment, any of the elements that show up in the bridge of incidents, then that's the meaning within, and we can change the cause within. So then you can value the journey of the bridge of incidents as well as the destination. So then all the power is in the inner world. The outer world is a reflection of the inner world. And the outer world is primarily a reflection of what is in the subconscious mind. And the bridge of incidents are also materializations of what is in the subconscious mind. The desire outcome, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. And the as you believe part is the programming that's in the subconscious mind that manifests or materializes itself as the unique bridge of incidences that are based on the programming that you have within. So all power is in the inner world. So let's talk about some quotes from Charles Handel then. First of all, it's important to remember that we are individual expressions of one single universal mind. Okay, we are individual expressions of this whole mind. You will see this, and I've seen this in my business. What I notice is now because I've cleansed myself from so many limiting beliefs, that if I create a product or service that's needed and useful, people will email me, reach out to me, contact me, approach me. And I've received about three or four emails over the course of the last few weeks of people talking about how I appeared in their dreams doing certain things that is a service that I provide. Because our subconscious mind is connected to the universal mind, otherwise I call it the superconscious mind, and the superconscious mind is like a supercomputer. The universal mind is a supercomputer that distributes desires and hunches and inspirations to the minds that are harmonious with those desires. So if you've got something that you want to create and you've released limiting beliefs to work with the universal mind, then you will send that information to the universal mind and the universal mind will distribute it to the subconscious mind of other individuals as hunches, inspirations, dreams, intuitive guidance, because they are to benefit of that. If you've got a product or service that's needed or useful, those individuals will receive that hunch that this product or service is ready and they will move towards it. The universal mind is the life principle of every atom which is in existence. Every atom is continually striving to manifest more life. All are intelligent. All are seeking to carry out for the purpose for which they were created. So we are individuals of the universal mind, individual expressions 
that have been governed by the identity, the self-image. If we change the self-image around, we become different people. We're still the same awareness, but we are experiencing reality from a different perspective. For example, a lot of the desires and goals that I have right now are still at a core who I am. But however, they're different or how they are expressed is different than when I used to express or desire of how I wanted them to be 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So I talk about this then. What, where does the desire come from? The desire comes from the universal mind. The desire comes from the connections and collaborations with each other via the subconscious mind. And then we interpret the desires. Then our subconscious mind expresses them harmoniously. So a desire can be misinterpreted and expressed inharmoniously, and a desire can be interpreted and expressed harmoniously. If you have within your subconscious mind cleansed it to harmonious, spirit of harmony based programming, which is benefit for you, benefit for others, benefit for divine or evolution, and unconditional love, then you can only understand and interpret and express the desires that are harmonious to that. Then we can see then why in the external world we have inharmonious outcomes and harmonious outcomes. This is a matter of subconscious interpretation of desire and understanding that all is one and individual expressions have the ability to express based on the identity within the meaning that comes from the universal mind. It's how they interpret it via the subconscious mind. The world within is governed by mind. When we discover this world, we shall find the solution for every problem, the cause for every effect. And since the world within is subject to our control, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. So we all have the same desires. We interpret the desires differently. And how we interpret it via the subconscious mind, that's how we bring it forth. And the bridge of incidents are also a result of the interpretation and projection manifestation of what's in the subconscious mind. And what happens is we choose what we want to bring forth, what we desire in our mind, we do it either from the current identity or a higher version of our identity, a more pure identity. See, for example, you can desire to create something that is inharmonious, benefit for you or just yourself and not benefit for others. But what I find is that you will not get access to this power because this power, the universal mind, wants to manifest as an automatic system by the divine that wants to manifest heaven on earth. So heaven on earth means harmoniousness between you, others, and divine and evolution. So in order to work with this principle, we have to become more harmonious with others, divine, ourselves. And how do we do this? By cleansing the subconscious mind of limiting beliefs. And how do we cleanse our subconscious mind? By having it reveal itself as people, environment, circumstance, and information. Not to go and force and get angry at what's created and blame others or blame the external world, but to take responsibility within that it was a generation of the subconscious mind within. And then by changing the meaning within, then what we'll notice is that our desires will manifest or the bridge of incidences, which is a net result of programming in the subconscious mind, will also manifest in a harmonious way. So then that's going back to my example that I said about making money. Money is a net result, my subconscious mind programming over the years of creating products or services that are needed and useful, that are of benefit for me, others, and divine. And my goal is to amplify and receive the equivalent value because of law of correspondence. It's always like that. Quality of service, quantity of service, and spirit of service. So when I create a business goal, it manifests through a bridge of incidents in business opportunities, business steps, actions, behaviors, thoughts that are related to that programming surrounding money and brings forth all those via the connection in the universal mind who want to be in harmony with that particular criteria that I've set in my subconscious mind. So the world within is governed by mind. When we discover that the world, this world, we shall find the solution for every problem. The solution for every problem is changing the way we think about situations. It's not trying to change the external world. When we change what we think inside, we manifest through the bridge of incidents the solution in the external world. 
we can value what we created in the external world. We can thank it and have gratitude for it, but it is not the cause. It says the cause for every effect and and since the world within is subject to our all to our control, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. So let's get a little deeper into the world within. We cannot express powers that we do not possess. The only way by which we may secure possession of power is to become conscious of power, and we can never become conscious of power until we learn that all power is from within. So that's the thing we have to remember. All power is within, and we might assume that the power is in the external world, and that's called giving the power away. Now, in earlier stages of your journey, you might have assumed, because you've seen how different power dynamics work in the external way, as and assume that that's the only way. But there are better ways of doing it and ways where you feel more in unconditional love and bliss, which are the higher states of consciousness as discussed in Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. At the higher states of consciousness, you make the changes within and it is expressed in the external world. You don't try to force people. You don't manipulate people. You change the cause within and it expresses as harmonious people, environment, circumstance, and information because all are individual expressions of the same mind. There is only one mind and individual expressions of that mind. All power is from within and absolutely under your control. It comes through exact knowledge and by voluntary exercises of exact principles. So on my screen here, I've got the Robert Deltz model. Vision is your desired outcome, what you want to create in your imagination, which is one with the universal mind, the mind of God. Identity is what is in your subconscious mind, the programming that will manifest itself as the bridge of incidents to the materialization of your vision, and you can evolve the identity within to make the bridge of incidents more harmonious. Values and beliefs are symptoms of the identity, the identity being the self-image. Values and beliefs are as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. So it shall be done unto you is the vision and the identity and values and beliefs is as you believe. So thus the bridge of incidents become then as you believe. Now, the cool thing about this is you don't have to control the values and beliefs and say like how I did, I want money to show up in a certain way through entrepreneurship. Money can manifest from the most unexpected sources if you're open to it. And sometimes I receive money in that way because I believe in a pinnacle law, which is called law of correspondence. And that what I put out comes back to me. So my overall aim in life, even outside of my entrepreneurial endeavors, is to always bring good energy and well-being and happiness into the lives of others. So thus, I will also receive that as unexpected money. So does this mean that the only way you can attract money is through creating products or services that are needed, that are needed and useful? Absolutely not. You can attract money as you believe. You can change the believe the way you will attract money. And it will be done unto you. I choose to do it this way because this is how I feel harmonious with myself, others, and divine and evolution. Whenever I do something, and I've chosen this on my journey, I find myself at a better state of being to manifest what divine wants to manifest, which is the automatic programming that I have found in the superconscious, the universal mind, is bring forth heaven on earth. And heaven on earth means benefit for me, others, and divine, harmonious, all creatures, all people living in harmony. That is the pinnacle desire, or you could even say intent, of the divine to bring forth heaven on earth. Capabilities, behaviors, and environment. So all of this stuff is automatic manifestation when the vision is one to be assumed as the feeling of the wish fulfilled or fact, which impresses itself on the subconscious mind to evolve the identity and manifest all these things. Now, values and beliefs will manifest, capabilities will manifest, behaviors will manifest, and environment will manifest as part of the bridge of incidences to create what you desire. And you don't know, you don't have to know how. I know how, I know how I want it because I choose it that way, but you don't have to know how. This is the very important distinction because in the beginning, I did not know how. And as the most powerful forces of nature are the invisible forces. So we find that the most powerful forces of man are his invisible forces, his spiritual force. And the only way in which the spiritual force can manifest is through the process of thinking. Thinking is the only activity which the spirit possesses, and thought is the only product of thinking. We become what we think about. This was stated in The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. 
All prophets, wise men, philosophers have disagreed upon many different topics, but there is one thing that they are in complete and unanimous agreement on, that we become what we think about. And what we think about is not necessarily a verbal thought. It is the imagination. It is what we believe in our imagination that impresses the subconscious mind. Why? Because even the words are an image of mind. Speech is the image of mind. And mind is imagination. And imagination is one with the universal mind. And thus the imagination not only impresses the subconscious mind, but it impresses the superconscious mind or the universal mind to be distributed as conscious inspirations as needed to those that will be harmonious to that what you desire to create in the imagination. And as stated, and the premise of this video is all the power is within. So what I'm saying here then is to not become reactive and overly identified with the bridge of incidents because then you'll form an identity around it. It's to remember that the bridge of incidences occur to help you bring forth what you desire in the most harmonious way. If we get identified with the bridge of incidents of different elements, over-identify with it, we'll start using force and control and manipulation, and that's not how this power works. Now, we will be compelled to take certain behaviors, do certain things, put our attention in certain directions, talk to certain people, but that will always be done from power and not force. If some of it is done through force, and you materialize what you vision, do not make the assumption that it was the force that brought it forth. Realize that it was a manifestation of what you believe in your subconscious mind. So thus goes back to what I was saying earlier. You don't have to be perfect at it. But as you evolve, you'll find that you're using a lot more power rather than force. The world within is the practical world in which the men and women of power generate courage, hope, enthusiasm, confidence, trust, and faith by which they are given the fine intelligence to see the vision and the practical skill to make the vision real. Again, it's all about the world within, and the outer world is reflected to reveal the world within. And the bridge of incidents are revelations of what's in the subconscious mind in which are assumptions that create the bridge of incidents based on what is within. All is within. The world without is a reflection of the world within. What appears without is what has been found within. In the world within may be found infinite wisdom, infinite power, and an infinite supply of all that is necessary waiting for unfoldment, development, and expression. If you recognize these potentialities in the world within, they will take form in the world without. So the subconscious mind automatically expresses. It is impressed via the imagination or impressed by what we choose to be impressed by in the external world and assume that the external world has power over us if we want to. It's up to you. And the subconscious mind will express. Now, it's the conscious mind that has the ability to impress the subconscious mind with the imagination. It is then also the mind that chooses to assume that all the power is within. The conscious mind and the subconscious mind work well together. It is also the conscious mind that forms stories and assumptions about the bridge of incidents. These two minds have to work harmoniously, and then it'll work harmoniously with the superconscious mind, or infinite intelligence, or the universal mind, whatever label you choose. You'll notice that I use the same label, or sometimes I use different labels. They're referring to the same element, which you can call infinite intelligence, or the mind of God, or God. It is the coordination of these two centers of our being and the understanding of their functions, which is the great secret of life. With this knowledge, we can bring the objective and subjective minds into conscious cooperation, objective being the conscious mind and subjective mind being the subconscious mind, into, co into conscious cooperation and thus coordinate the finite and the infinite. So in order to have the infinite mind working with you and to bring forth the bridge of incidents that are in ways that you never possibly believed could happen to be contributing factors to what you want to happen, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind have to work harmoniously together, which is the exact reason why I've been discussing this a lot, because I want to cover this from as many perspectives as possible, because my focus is to create entrepreneurs. And this information can be used even outside of entrepreneurship. But what I've found is that entrepreneurial success is a net result, like all kinds of success, 
what is in the subconscious mind and what is expressed and what is assumed to be true and what is not based on what, what is within to reveal the bridge of incidences which either causes somebody to be propelled forward, see obstacles as opportunities, or to be overwhelmed by them and throw in and give up. Our future is entirely within our own control. It is not at the mercy of any capricious or uncertain external power. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.